I have been taking way too much stuff with me on these kayak camping trips, and that stops this year. <laughs> wow. Today we're going through a gear list that isn't ultralight, but it's everything you need and not much more. Starting off, we'll dive right into the sleep system and one of the biggest differences between kayak camping and other types of camping is that you kind of need to keep everything in a dry bag. So what we have here is a prototype duffel that you guys can keep an eye out for in the future. For my tent, I use a Sierra Designs Meteor Light 2 and it's just really enjoyable to use because it folds down so small, fits in the pack easily and it's pretty lightweight. I'll use this in environments when I know there aren't gonna be trees or if I'm taking Lisa with me because it is the perfect size with the double air pad for like a, a couple's camping trip. But I've really been enjoying this one, used it about two years now and have absolutely no plans to change it. Another great thing about this is the kind of the open concept for the roof. Love being able to stare up into the cypress trees like we're surrounded right now and uh, watch the stars come in, it's pretty cool. As my sleeping pad, I will use the Big Agnes Qcor SLX I have the regular and long version, although I think I want to upgrade to something else that's a little bit wider. I mistakenly bought the skinny version. As far as comfort goes, insanely good. I have a couple different sleeping bags in my gear loadout this year, and I don't usually put it into a dry bag by itself. It's usually in the duffel, but my main sleeping bag is a Sear Designs Taquito 20 degree. That's gonna be made of down, so it's ultra lightweight, and you can compact it really, really nicely and so it just fits in the duffels really well. I'll use that for kind of like my shoulder seasons and my winter months. I think I tend to sleep colder, so I do like having that extra insulation. As far as sleeping bags go and their temperature rating, you do want to be careful because they say 20 degree, and I think that's usually a survival rating. There are some companies out there that'll make that a comfort rating, but generally plan for like 15 degrees above what that lowest rating is, and that's where you're gonna be like right on the brink of comfortable. So really, I don't like getting below 35 degrees in that sleeping bag without layering on like a, a jacket or something like that. Then as far as my summer months go, I'll just use a really cheap like $20 sleeping bag I got off of Amazon and that's really more of just like a sheet. I'll lay it on top of me and uh, yeah, I don't know. During the summer here, it's just so hot, you can barely even sleep. We got a towel for a pillow, a towel for a bed, and a budget deal. Feeling good. <laughs> then the final sleeping bag I use is a Big Agnes Double. I think it's called like a King Solomon. And that's a 15 degree down. And that's what I'll use when I take Lisa camping. So that is when I will stuff a sleeping bag into its own dry bag. I have absolutely loved that. Lisa and I sleep warm in it down into the 40s. And we even oftentimes have to unzip it. So I'll pair that sleeping bag with a double sleeping pad. Also by Big Agnes. I'm not sure what that one's called but it's super heavy, so I don't like to take that all the time. And my preferred method of camping is usually to be in a hammock. And so I've been really enjoying this Ridge Outdoor gear. I think this is like their 360 Pinnacle version. Um, love it, the price is excellent. It's like $60 or $50 or something like that, which is just insane. The best part about it though, is that it's 11 feet long and I can sleep flat even at 6'2", which is just so key. So especially during summer, hammocks allow for a nice breeze under you. They don't kind of trap in the heat. And uh, during summer, definitely my go-to. I haven't found a winter hammock camping loadout yet. And so maybe I'll work on that here in 2022. And whenever I do hammock camp, I'll take a little travel pillow, nothing much. Probably got a bed, bath and beyond, that's about it. And if I'm feeling luxurious and don't want to go ultralight, I'll bring my bed pillow to sleep with the, uh, with the sleeping bag, just because a good night's rest is so key. And so I, I do enjoy that. That's gonna wrap it up for the sleeping section. As far as cooking goes, I'm going to actually start implementing this Jetboil flash system. I have been using that honkin' Coleman grill thing that you guys see me making coffee and food on. Uh, that thing is just so, so big and so heavy. It takes up an entire backpack by itself. And so I'm definitely gonna be retiring that, getting into the Jetboil system and this should suit my needs. To be quite honest, I was only using that Coleman because I had fuel for it and I wanted to run out of fuel, but it just burns so unevenly and then the canisters run out at like half fill 
and mess up your food and you're like, man, why is it taking so long? So I'm going to be retiring that and probably just like donating it or something. On the flat water trips, I'll bring a table. And also if I'm taking Lisa, I'll bring a table. It adds quite a bit of weight, but it's a nice luxury to have. We're gonna be prepping food and no, we're not gonna paddle a long distance. So on river trips, I won't bring this thing though. You always have to have a medical kit. And then my various items, I'll have wipes, lighter, saw, knife, and fire starter, which is just real handy to have around camp. And then my electronics bag, I have a big portable battery for charging up phones, cameras. I have a headlamp. And then for 2022, new to me is going to be a nice flashlight. I've never actually had a nice flashlight. And this one's by Olight. It's the Warrior Mini 2. And this thing is bright. As far as the headlamp goes, this is a Petzl. I don't know which model. And to be quite honest, I'm not very impressed with it. So in 2022, I will be looking to upgrade the headlamp. If you guys have any recommendations, feel free to shoot them my way. The last piece of electronics is something that's new as well, and that is an air pump for the air pads. I've heard a lot of ultralight hikers say this is one of the few luxuries that they'll bring with them, and I do not like pumping up my air, air pad, so this should be a nice little help. Plus it's got a light, but yeah, I'm looking forward to, to utilizing this. We have used it as like a, an air torch for fires. It really gets them going, feeds them a lot of oxygen, and so it is helpful there. <laughs> it literally sounds like a blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> so that's gonna wrap up what's in my duffel and continue the electronics. I will keep my camera, GoPro, and other quick grab items like my phone and wallet in this Remote Designs five liter hip pack. It is completely waterproof and just super handy to have on the deck. It's replaced the Pelican case that I used to use and I've been super happy. It's also really versatile for just day hikes and quick adventures where you don't need to take a backpack or a duffel. So invaluable, front zipper, main compartment, open concept, super nice to have. And for the cooler, I'm changing it up this year. So I don't know if this is gonna be the cooler I stick with, but I wanted to change and I wanna start packing coolers lighter. In previous years, I've really weighed down my kayak, probably honestly like straight up with 40 pounds worth of stuff in the cooler alone. And I just wanna really minimize that. So bring the necessities, wanna have food, but no matter which cooler I go with, and this is the Mountain Smith six pack, it's got to have a zipper up here that separates the food and the water slush down there. And then I'll bring my non ultralighter friendly Nalgene water bottle. This is the 48 ounce model. And I'll bring a life straw to filter water wherever it's a clean river system. I'll probably look to upgrade my water filtration. This one's pretty old. Then we have the contents of this Remote Designs 27 liter backpack. This thing is awesome, it's a, it's a dry backpack, so completely waterproof once again. Very key for kayak camping. If you don't have your stuff in a dry bag, it will get wet. I have seen way too many friends trust the dry hatches in their kayak, and then they always pull out sopping wet stuff. You don't want to be in that department, trust me. Ooh. So in here, I've got some more cooking supplies. So this grill has clearly been used and abused. This is the UCO Grilly Put. It's a small one, absolutely instrumental on my camping trips. We love to make good food, especially burgers. And this thing is so clutch for that. You just heat up coals on the fire, rake them aside, put this on top, and now you're grilling some delicious food. I probably need to get another one just because this thing is so beat up, but I absolutely love it. It is one of the pieces of original kit I got for kayak camping and man, invaluable. I'll have this thing forever. <laughs> And for coffee in the mornings, I prefer the espresso variety when I'm at home. So having this mocha pot is super key. It makes a very artistic brew, which is fun to film, but that's not why I use it. Uh, I mostly use it because I really enjoy the taste of coffee out of it. Super, super good coffee comes out of here. And then once I'm done brewing up the coffee, I will use a Wild Gear 16 ounce cup. This is kind of my general camp cup. It's worked well for a couple years and I like the signature on it, <laughs> so I'm gonna keep using it. As far as coffee goes, I actually just received this as a present from Bennett. It is a portable coffee grinder. And this thing is a game changer because we used to just sweat out on the riverbed trying to grind up hand coffee and it was just a huge pain. But not anymore. You just turn this thing on, it starts grinding for you. And a couple minutes later, you have enough grounds for uh, a mocha pot, which is super, super nice. And here's a low key tip for all you guys. Steal your wife's hot hand 
and buy her a new one because it's going to get dirty in the riverbed. But this thing is so key for handling hot items during cooking and coffee and man, I bring this on every single trip. Just don't let it get wet because it holds water. I'll keep my drone in a very water secure backpack and this is super handy for getting those beautiful shots of the landscape and the environment, something I really enjoy including on the videos. Now we're gonna cover some of the paddling specific gear, starting off with this Stolquist Trekker PFD. I bought this, I mean, honestly, one of my first pieces of gear and I keep using it. You can kind of tell because it's getting a little grungy and dirty, but I have absolutely no plans on replacing it anytime soon. And yeah, we're gonna keep on trekking with it. See what I did there? Quick beverage break. And for my river paddle, I'm gonna be using the Aquabound Whiskey two-piece fiberglass paddle. It is such a treat to use this out on the river and looks cool too, which is nice. I have noticed it's held up quite well to the abuse I've put it through. So that's always encouraging. I know it's certainly a premium product, but it's one of those things where you can probably buy it, treat it well, and you'll use it literally forever. And as far as my flat water adventures go, I'm going to be using that Bending Branches Navigator Fishing Paddle. Most pretty paddle I've ever seen. I mean, once you see the detail in person, that thing is just amazing. Also, paddles really well too and it's surprisingly light for being wood. It weighs probably the same as this one. But it's a carbon fiber shaft on both of these and then fiberglass tip here. And then that Bending Branches is going to be a wood tip. For shoes, during winter months and shoulder months, I'll use the NRS Paddle Boot. It's worked pretty well. As far as my shirt goes, I'm actually in development on this sun hoodie. So I'll be wearing those out on the river this year and in the preceding future. And as far as shorts go, I usually do Columbia Backcast 3 water shorts. They're nice and durable. I don't mind getting them dirty. And uh, yeah, they've worked super well. Hats, I'm always stocked up with Sendero PC hats. And I don't know, I really enjoy the designs on them. And you can see this one has quite a few river miles on it. So I've enjoyed that a lot. As far as my kayaks go, on the flat water adventures and just quick grab and go, I'm gonna be using this kayak canoe behind me. It is the Discovery Solo 119 by Old Town. And it's just so light and so fun to paddle, super quick on the water as well. For the bigger river adventures and kayak camping stuff, I'm gonna be using that Sportsman 120 in the blue photic color. It is sweet, man. One thing I love about the kayak is that it glides so well in skinny water, which is important here in Texas because we always go through rapid sections. They're super skinny and it just floats right on top of it. I think it's because of the huge capacity, but I absolutely love the 12 foot length for longer adventures. It just gives you so many places to store gear and it's a real treat. Let me know which pieces of gear you think are missing from my loadout or what do you think I could substitute because I'm always open to improve it and that's going to be the goal in 22. Fast and light, lots of big adventures. I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.